Hi, it's Evie with The Aesthetic Educator, and today we're here talking about the five things you should know before you get your lips done. The first thing you need to really think about before you get your lips filled is that your injector's skill level will play a huge role in your results. We've all heard the stories about botched lip filler by unqualified injectors, so we really want to make sure that you're doing getting your lips filled safely and effectively. You really need to do your research about your injector and their years of experience, other customer reviews, some people that have already seen them before. Um, take a look at their before and after. Sometimes you can find those on their social media channels or maybe their website. It's important to have, go for, with a qualified injector because their years of experience will get you the results you're looking to achieve and also make sure you're at the highest quality of care. Those injectors, they've been trained and they have practiced their technique. They, most of them have years of experience learning and um, working in the field and specifically doing injections. So you really wanna make sure you have someone that knows what they're doing. Sometimes it can be difficult to find a clinic within your budget and an injector that's in that's somewhere nearby so you can go for follow-up appointments and consultations. Luckily, pretty much every clinic, and if not everyone, most offer free consultations before they perform a procedure on you. Two, of course, lip fillers require maintenance. Most lip fillers are made out of hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is naturally produced in the body and there's enzymes in your body that will break down that hyaluronic acid, that molecule. So when your body breaks down your hyaluronic acid, it results in volume loss. So when you lose volume, that's when fillers come in. Injectors will add filler to the areas that you've lost volume. So typically that could be under eyes, in the lips, pretty much wherever you want. It could be chin fillers, sometimes they do the nose. These are all great ways to ensure that you can get that plump, full, youthful look. One thing you have to consider though, that because your body does break it down naturally, you'll have to maintain your results. So if you wanna keep up with the volume loss, because we're constantly aging, you're gonna to have to go back in for your follow-up appointment. Since hyaluronic acid is naturally produced in the body, it makes it safe and reversible. So if you don't like your results, they could be reversed. You just inject hyaluronidase, this is done by your provider, and it breaks down the molecule and returns back to your, your natural results. Okay, and number three, getting your lips done is not cheap. The price of your procedure will vary according to a couple of factors. One, the quality of your injector, so you're typically gonna pay a little bit more for their expertise and their experience in the industry. The brand of the filler product also plays a role. The amount of product that's needed to fill the area, for example, your lips may need a lot less than under your eyes or your cheeks or your jaw. There's hundreds of filler brands available on the market right now um, in Canada and the US and all across the globe. Some of these products are cheaper than others. That doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't as good as others. They just may be less of a brand name. So it's important to speak with your injector about the quality of your product that they're using and look into that brand as well. Sometimes cheaper product can raise red flags, but not in all cases. Sometimes it just may be a product that isn't popular in your country. Most importantly, the amount of product you'll need varies person to person. So um, it may be more expensive for you than for a friend. Or if your body naturally breaks it down quickly, you might need to get your procedure a little bit more frequently. So for example, if you're someone that um, your body metabolizes hyaluronic acid within six months, you're gonna be there for your follow-up treatment a little sooner than a friend. Four, you should avoid alcohol and blood thinners before your appointment. Alcohol is a big one because it does cause your body to naturally become more dehydrated. It's really important that you stay hydrated before you get your procedure and try to avoid stimulants like caffeine as well. It'll just create more um, bruising as well as more bleeding potentially in your procedure. Natural blood thinners like alcohol, vitamin E, fish oil, um, and aspirin can also create more bruising after your procedure. So to avoid that, you're gonna to wanna to avoid those in the day or two leading up to your procedure and then as well as afterwards. Every patient has a different experience and different swelling after your procedure, but you can pretty much guarantee that you will swell. And that brings me to number five, your lips will be swollen after your procedure. Sometimes that can last up to a week. So don't schedule anything for the next day or later that day, your lips will be pretty plump. What you can do is you can ice them after your procedure. You're gonna to wanna to try to avoid any puckering lips, so like that, because what it's gonna do is gonna push your filler together before it settles. So you really want your filler to settle in before you start making funny faces. A lot of patients get a little bit worried about their procedure. I don't like it, my lips are too big. That could just be because of the swelling. So most injectors will recommend that you wait at least two weeks before you start coming back in to do your follow-up appointment if you need more or if you don't like your results but you need to remember your swelling will go down 
if it does not please see your um, please see a doctor or your injector and they can give you the next steps on what you should do that's it for me on the five things you need to know before you get your lip injections subscribe for more information like this on cosmetic dermatology or aesthetic medical aesthetics i'll be talking here about skincare ingredients medical aesthetics procedures lasers all that kind of fun stuff so if you love this information subscribe to my youtube channel you can follow me on to instagram TikTok. Pinterest, and you can check out the blog at aestheticeducator.com. We're just getting started here on Aesthetic Educator, so feel free to hop over to the blog and send in a request on a topic you want to hear about. Thanks for watching!